Vita stands on the shoulders of a lot of leaders in the Brooklyn community, and there were a lot of organizations that sort of melded into what became Vita. So uh, one of our uh, seminal leaders is uh, Dr. Al Van, and uh, I knew him when he was an educator. The, he headed, a, he and some colleagues headed an organization called the African American Teachers Association. So many years ago, a friend of mine who lived in, uh, up in Harlem at that time, called me and said, uh, you know, there's a big meeting that's been called by this young man who is uh, the president of the African Teachers Association. And you need to get over there to that meeting to see what's going on, because he's organizing a big political meeting. And um, in those days, uh, I was just uh, excited about being part of a movement, anything that was happening uh, that sounded like it uh, was important to uh, what I represented, what I thought was important to me as a person and my generation. I got over there, and uh, it was a meeting that had been called by uh, uh, at that time, Al Van. First of all, it, it should be clear that no one person really gets uh, things accomplished. It's always uh, a group. Uh, the genesis of VITA, Vanguard Independent Democratic Association, probably began uh, from the organization of the African American Teachers Association, who was first formed in 1964 and had about a 10 year, 10 year run. And uh, our focus uh, was to bring about a change in the, in the education system in New York City and to involve uh, getting more black teachers into the system, uh, getting the contribution of African people reflected in the curriculum and in the textbooks and getting parents involved in the schools, that, that whole movement. And at a certain point, fighting the UFT at that time and, and fighting you know the powers that be, uh, it became clear that in order to make dramatic changes, we probably needed to increase our ability to affect that system. So uh, we were, we were uh, talked to and discussed that perhaps we should consider being involved in politics. The power was also in the political arena. It's not enough just to be an educator uh, because the politicians are sitting somewhere else making decisions, mm -hmm. making laws, passing budgets, Etc. So we realized that we also needed a political arm, a political wing, tip of the spear. I became involved because Dr. John Flateau approached me and said, I want you to be on the county committee. Al Van is running for state assembly. He said, and I want you to be on the county committee. One of my nicknames is Map Man. So I have a facility for um, dealing with statistics and numbers and as you can imagine in in politics it's all about the numbers we just had an election uh, statewide and whoever gets the the largest number is the winner so I very quickly moved into that one of that kind of role um, um, analyzing previous elections and helping to plot our strategy literally our organizing strategies where should we be going who should we be talking to where, where are our actually opposition's political base and power base? We need, you need to know not just where you're going, but you're not, the only, uh, you're not the only person in the field. So doing that kind of analysis and helping to inform our political organizing. Initially, one of the things that we did not have was we did not have a, a group of young people who uh, were uh, educated, and knowledgeable and had skills in the electoral legal arena. Uh, so one of the things that, uh, that happened was that um, Al was able to bring together some young, uh, young lawyers. Uh, one of them uh, was uh, John Flateau, the, uh, the almighty Flateau family, uh, Esmeralda Simmons, uh, Paul Wooten. So those were some of those lawyers that uh, came initially uh, into VITA and became voting rights lawyers, um, redistricting experts, uh, experts in the electoral uh, process, so that when people wanted to run for elected office, 
there were a group of lawyers who understood uh, what was needed and could represent people. Um, they also were involved in redistricting so that some of the districts that we now represent, including mine, these people, these young lawyers were involved uh, in organizing uh, around the making sure we had districts that reflected the population in Bedford-Stuyvesant uh, and Fort Greene and Clinton Hill. My role for the campaign was one and consistently one, attorney, <laughs> legal. And I was very clear. I was not a GLTV person. I was not a stats person. And we had great people doing all that. I was legal. Um, and I came in uh, as, a, a, or as I told you, they got me right after I took the bar. I was admitted to the bar that next year, right after I took that exam. And uh, they got me fresh out of law school. And I focused on uh, first following uh, a lead attorney and then being the lead attorney. Um, and being the lead attorney uh, was a lot of responsibility. But at that point, I was one year away from being the president of the Black Bar Association for Brooklyn. So I was gathering all the lawyers I could to come and work on this cause. We have a cadre of young lawyers that were also part of, of, the, of our movement that literally helped us uh, sue the political establishment. It caused a revolution in New York City when they saw all this army of black lawyers working for free for designated positions, people who never heard about election law in law school, and we had training sessions, we did the whole thing. Uh, we introduced them to their candidates, we supervised them, and that doesn't mean that once in a while somebody got knocked off the ballot. I have to let you know, there were times when even with all of this, we got knocked off the ballot because there was some minuscule change in the law and the court interpreted it this way instead of that way and we got caught in the middle. It didn't matter because I'll get out the vote people. We won, on the, we won on, on, at the polls. There were a number of political victories uh, as well. Vita, uh, and, which would include our, our membership and our political leadership played a, a seminal role in the 1984 presidential campaign of Jesse Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, at a time when he wasn't being embraced by the political establishment, we became a very important political base uh, in New York. And actually, uh, Dr. Van chaired the New York campaign in 84. And um, we elected a very large uh, delegation uh, to the National Democratic National Convention. So the Jackson campaigns in 1984 and 1988, uh, electing, playing a seminal role in electing our first and only so far African-American mayor, mm -hmm. uh, the Honorable David Dinkins. And uh, I, I'll say I wound up, it wasn't accidental, it was providential, as his chief of staff. But that wasn't by accident. I joined Al Van's staff in 1980 as a counsel to him, and we ended up doing a series of litigations. Most notably, there were three. The first one was the Haran versus Koch case, which went all the way to the United States Supreme Court, which held that the New York City Council districting plan was unconstitutional, applied the Voting Rights Act to New York City, and require the New York City Council to uh, draw redistricting plans which were racially uh, not gerrymandered. As a matter of fact, um, there was a team of lawyers and um, uh, the team that I was uh, uh, working with was Dr. Esmeralda Simmons, her and I. I get much of the credit for the work we did in the Haran Koch case, but it was clearly a team effort. The two of us worked hand in hand and how we ended up doing that litigation in federal court. It went all the way up to the United States Supreme Court. We flew down to Washington in the plane and uh, we argued the case before the Honorable Thurgood Marshall who upheld the objection to the plan and um, forced the New York City Council to draw a fair redistricting plan. In 1980, we had three elections for Roger Green. Vita had three elections for Roger Green, and we won. One of them was the astonishing, never done before, never done since, canceling of the election in 1985 in a case, Haran versus Koch, that was litigated by myself 
with Paul Wooten and Paul Wooten, where Paul actually had to argue. I wrote the paper. He argued before Thurgood Marshall, and we stopped, and I mean had an election canceled because the city of New York Board of Elections refused to comply with the Voting Rights Act, Section 5. The second thing has to be the Jesse Jackson campaign. Vita was the core of the Jesse Jackson campaign for the entire state of New York. I'm talking about 1984. Paul Wooten and I served as his statewide attorneys. I mean, this is not small stuff. And that's when we went to the DNC convention in San Francisco and turned it out. Turned it out. Jesse Jackson campaign from D.C. was running that place. We got on the on the policy positions, the platform. We were doing all this stuff, and they're saying, where did these people come from? And you know what the answer was? Brooklyn, Vita, Vita Strong. We have a, we have a governor today called Cuomo, mm -hmm. Andrew Cuomo, but he's the son of Mario Cuomo, and Vita played a seminal role in 1982 in electing his father as governor. And that also then gave um, central Brooklyn uh, uh, persons the opportunity to serve in very high level positions throughout government. Uh, and a number of those people came out of Vita. Uh, Dr. Simmons, who's here now with me at Medgar, was the first, became the first deputy commissioner of the New York State Division of Human Rights. I became a senior vice president at the Urban Development Corporation, the state's lead economic development agency. Um, uh, and there were a number of others I, I, I could go on. So that's another thing we need to realize. Um, there's, in politics, there should be a reciprocal relationship. We shouldn't support politicians that aren't going to support us, support our agenda, and, and support uh, improving the quality of life in our communities. And uh, I'll, I'll mention another person who just made history. She's made history twice, who's come. She's a B Vita baby. That's uh, the Honorable Letitia James. She worked for a decade. A lot of people may not know, but she worked for almost a decade for Assemblyman Al Van in Albany. So that's where she, and in Brooklyn. So she learned her politics, her, her governmental expertise uh, working for one, our, our, our founder, Revita. The most impactful experiences that I've had as a member of Vanguard Independent Democratic Association has been number one, to be a delegate for Jesse Jackson, and also to be able to attend as a delegate when uh, President Barack Obama was running for president. In addition to that, I've had an opportunity to serve in so many different capacities. Member of the Community School Board of District 16, and also having the opportunity to work for a member of Congress and the New York City Controller. My proudest Vita moment was back during the um, Sandy, Sandy uh, storm. Uh, I was working at the time uh, for my union as a political organizer, and we were going out to a different locations that were hit heavily, looking to support our membership. When we got out there, we saw that, you know, particularly the Rockwoods, that it was just such devastation that we had to do more than just help our membership. We had to help the community. We had to help people. Uh, at the time, being the vice president of political social action for VITA, I thought it would be a good idea to combine the resources of VITA and TWU to go out there and help the people, help our people. So we decided to pick a day on a Saturday to go out there with resources, supplies, and we were actually able to get the MTA to supply us two MTA buses, which uh, picked everyone up in front of the VITA office, the old VITA office on 1424 Fulton Street. And we got the backing of the community. The residents of bed that really came through. We had so many people where we, had, we couldn't even fit everyone on the bus. So one of the best learning moments I had in Vita was participating in the 2013 election of our current councilman, Robert Cornegie. I was involved with our current councilman's race and he won by a very slight margin, but it reminded me and others just how important all of our voting is and the impact it could have for the future of our community. It is our responsibility as people to inform, to motivate, to activate our people to recognize that every person needs to be a registered voter and to participate. Experiencing this time when we have an illegitimate president in Donald J. Trump 
and all the havoc that he is reaping because really that we don't have a constituency that is informed and that is participating. If there's anything, I mean, Malcolm X said it best, it's either going to be the ballot or the bullet, meaning our liberation and indeed our empowerment determines our ability to change the system either by the ballot or the bullet. I think we would support the ballot. Our bread and butter is among other things, is producing votes that elect quality people who then serve us in government at all levels. I believe that we must organize, educate, and agitate. Because if we don't resist many of the current policies that are being put in place, uh, we are going to be back where we were before. Our young people must register and vote and participate. Civic engagement is critical to the development of our communities. What do we need now? We need to sustain this movement by bringing in the next generation of young activists who have the same fire in the belly that I did and others uh, uh, in, in, in that, at that time, um, and recognizing that Vita's sole purpose is for political empowerment. It's not a church. It's not a school, except it's a political school, but this is a, an organization that is organized for the purpose of empowering this community politically. Uh, I may not be a regular at every meeting, but I'll tell you, when they call me, I come. Because that's what it is to be a VITA member. Once a VITA member, always a VITA member. It should be our goal to do everything we can in our power to make sure our people are informed, they are engaged, and they are registered, and they are voting in every election. There should not be an off-year election. When there is an opportunity to vote, the interests of our people, the interests of our community, the interests of humanity, we need to be a part of that because we have a history that shows that when we are engaged, and when we are involved, then changes will be made and empowerment of our people will become a reality.